this morning and that's the date up here i've built a new cairo iso yesterday somebody asked me eric can you also use grub to install cairo so i've built a new cairo iso locally on this machine and then we go to a virtual machine to test it out super f7 template clone it make something that's correct eh? the settings the configurations that are correct and then you go and have a look at the out folder of cairo cairo out the one that we've just built we boot up we get one thing right one kernel and choose either it's um, intel and amd first line nvidia cards or any card and take this safe graphics no mode set and hope for the best but normally you do this one the open source and if you have an nvidia machine yeah you take the second then we boot up we've got the latest linux kernel this morning a linux kernel came in so we've got the, the last kernel for this moment right so ctrl alt t iso that's the moment that the information here neofetch is also installed so that's the kernel 6.15.5 if you want to change any Linux distribution containing Calamaris using the GUI of Calamaris you have to look for the code where is the configuration of the application always the same thing and in our case it's here in ETC Calamaris but it can be also on other places so the question of the user was can i change the bootloader basically and i've added a line in here let's make this bigger so you can see right i've added a line so normally it's gonna do this this is my iso cairo is my settings right i don't want to click everywhere and change and think no it's system boot. but it what if right if a user says i'd like to have this particular um system but then in grub then we need to be able to type let's see okay type we can but i need to have uh yeah keyboards <laughs> my keyboard settings that's that now i have azerti and now i can do alt he r g r and this one right that's it that's the change so we added the second line so you don't have to remember grub how it's safe well spelled basically control s that's it the user wants grub the user has now grub but let's um, test it out till the end launch anyway <coughs> so there's no choice anywhere we've done it in the text we used to have the arclix uh, welcome app and that's where we switched right that's where we over we overwrite the file and telling hey it has to be grub that's all a switcher basically click that button then say it's grub click that button system deboot click that button it's refined and that's the thing that's where the file is and now calamaris knows what to do so let's wait a little bit till it installs and pulls the recording and this is where we are going to install the bootloader. So if we talk a log, we see already what's going on with a grub command there. Done. So it's not that difficult once you know, and that's all the point, right? Knowledge. Once you know what to do, where to change what, voila, we got grub. We don't have a nice grub, right? That's up to you if you want to have a nice theme there basically grub is just getting you started uh, so it doesn't really matter if they're colors or not it's just uh, a means to an end let's boot up right so there you are you have here now grub i suppose we can have a look at this and there you see the folder grub right and go a little bit deeper and you see here some information we are using grub now i've been using grub for the last 10 years and only on two occasions there were issues with it and the reason is well maybe 
some more extended um, and communication of the Arch Linux community would have saved us. But if you know Arch Shroot, you're back on your feet in 10 minutes, right? So again, knowledge, how to Arch Shroot. And I guess let's ask Arconix tons of videos about Arch Shooting, Arch Shooting, Arch Shooting. To fix your computer, you can fix any Arch Linux system, well, based on Arch. So also Endeavor OS, also Garuda, etc. right? All of them can be fixed with Arch Shroot. That's one thing I'd like to add in the video. And the other thing is, well, Arclix had this um, idea to make things better. And I've looked prior to this video, I've looked around and it's not on the AOR yet. What is the recommendation? To automate things, basically. Control find hook, start reading, because you want to have grub, you need to know this page. But in here, there is this Pacman hook, for example, here. Add this particular file, so we have to write and create a file in the etc pacman.d hook, scrub update hook, trigger and so on. Maybe I can show you, it's not that difficult. Control C. What does it do? Operation upgrade, so if there's an update coming in, um, I probably would add update as well, just to be sure. But anyway, upgrade, right? If the package, the package is the target grub. If we get an upgrade in from grub, then you do this and this and that. It's gonna do this one. And that was the issue in the beginning. So grub install, this is indeed something you need to know. ESP needs to be replaced with something. I know, maybe control find ESP is somewhere mentioned prior to this. There must be something somewhere in the beginning, the mention of the word ESP. So control find ESP the first time it's mentioned <laughs> is in corresponds. <laughs> sure. Here, in the entire article, ESP denotes the mount point of the EFI system partition, AKA ESP, right? So that's um, something to know. It, you shouldn't type ESP. Anyway, um, so back to the hook that I copy pasted already, but we wanna see it. So hook, hook, this thing is going to install, grub install to the EFI directory, which I should type a bootloader ID grub sure um, and then you're making this okay so how do you do this last thing for the video let's move this away nice wallpaper but if you don't like this wallpaper this particular thing right alt t is trashing this wallpaper and that's maybe bitter a little bit better right so we have um, the need control uh, super shift enter we need to go to file system we need to go to the etc how do i know this right etc pacman d you start typing pacman dot d the hooks found one that's another one right have a look what's in here always interesting hooks right mouse click open the terminal here i can touch sudo touch because it's protected and then I type the name and grub update dot hook. Now it's up to you if you stay in a terminal or you just say, you know what, um, I take an editor, one of the editors that is present. If we, if you don't see the one you like, right, like Sublime Text here, you install it. But it's easier, right? It's just a, a well, typewriter, sort of an editor. This is what needs to go in there. Control C, Control V, Control V, voila, and save. Then it says, hey, you're the protected part, etc., etc. Yes, please save it anyway. Check your work again by double clicking it again. It's there. So basically we're saying up when there's an update. So from time to time you update your system. Update is also correct. And we have a rec space thing. That's no problem if you want to know what's that. So this line 
at this point in time. There's a hiccup on this particular server, so fine. But oh, it just goes down the list, eh? so there's no error. Uh, really, no problem, really, right? But now I've said, never mind you, you're sick, right? And you don't see any errors anymore. But if we update our system, this might come in, grub. And then we should see this, right? Fail to get canonical path of ESP, right? We should change it, right? User bin grub install. This is something we still need to do. But what we see already is reinstalling grub. That's one grub install. That's something we do, right? User bin grub install. Regenerate it if needed. So this is the installing bit, grub install. And then it's the configuration bit. But first, let's get rid of the ESP. Let's make this bigger. ESP should be boot EFI. How do I know that? Let's first save. Let's see if that's correct. Well, actually we can do, I, I guess we can do a DUF or something or other tools. Boot EFI, right? VFAT. So the EFI partition is definitely a partition because the device, the SSD, is split into two pieces. One is SDA1 and the other one is SDA2, meaning boot EFI is what I should type here. That's the EFI. And if you did something different, you need to change it here. So the EFI directory is correct. Bootloader is called grub. It doesn't really matter, I think, what it's called, as long there is a name, I think, right? Don't know everything. Pseudo Pacman minus S in the time, back in the day, in the years, right? We called it Arclix. It's just a name, I think. Let's see. That looks better, right? So they give us the explanation. The guys from Arch say, hey guys, uh, to use the new features, etc., etc., you need to do this. And let's have a look. Where is that? That's this, right? Installing. And then you need to make the configuration again. And that's this one. So basically, you can forget about it. And that's the point, right? In our clicks, we made something similar inside a package. Now there isn't because, well, we're focusing on system D, but this and so many more tutorials are um, out there. And I thought they would have made something like this, eh? Pac-Man hook or grub hook or something like that. So find out hooks are super interesting. So yay, uh, grub hook is what I typed but I did not find it. So it's, this is not it. This is the make configuration. So the second bit in the code. So that is this one. That's available with this one and I can make a backup, but there is no install. So that's also important that you should install it. And that's why in those 10 years, twice Grub failed to boot again, right? So we could not boot our system. We had to go to Archroot. So voila, um, so the guy who wants to have grub, has grub, think about it, read a lot of the inf information because you're choosing something, another Lego block, and you have to know it, um, totally understand what's going on with your system. And that's it, now we have grub, and if you wanna see it once more, so if we reboot, we see a black screen, wanna have a theme, install a theme, right? But this is your grub. All right, enjoy.